Next to Normal is a musical about a family in crisis. Um, it's, uh, it's something Tom and I have been working on for a number of years now and has evolved um, over the years as we've been writing it and also uh, we had a, pr a production at Second Stage last year and then at Arena Stage and now we're heading to Broadway and it's a, uh, you know, there's a temptation to say it's a rock musical. I think that it's a lot, there's, there's, there's rock music in it but it's a, there's a lot more than that musically. There are a number of different musical styles but it is a largely through song musical about a family that's dealing with um, a tragedy in their past and the implications that it has on their present and their future. Yeah, well it actually started in the BMI workshop. Um, Tom and I were in the, the BMI songwriting workshop and uh, we needed a subject for our 10 minute musical which is the final project in the first year. I assume it still is. Yeah. And um, we wanted to do something a little bit different, so we were sort of casting around for a subject. And I saw a report on, of all things, Dateline NBC about shock therapy, which I didn't know was still done in the world. And it turns out it is. And uh, I found that sort of a fascinating thing. And it sort of made me think, what about a woman who has been struggling with depression her whole life and has to go through shock therapy? So I called Tom and suggested it. And for some reason, he was like, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say OK? You know, I've never actually asked you that. Um, oh, you were used to me being nuts. Yeah, well, we had been working together for a, a couple of years at that point. We'd met in college. and. Uh, we would be writing these shows called the Varsity Show that, that you have to just write as quickly as possible and um, lots of times I would lean on Brian for ideas and to get us through certain uh, aspects of the show and so when he came to me with that subject matter I thought there has to be a good reason for this. Um, I just went along because it sounded interesting and I trust Brian. The basic story that is in the show now, uh, just obviously a much smaller version, but there are some songs that we wrote for that first version that exists in the show today. There's a song uh, that's actually really important in, um, in the show, as it was back then, called I Dream to Dance, which was actually I think one of the first songs we wrote for the show. May have been, yeah. One of the, one of the first one we wrote the first, for the 10-minute yeah. version. And um, I remember sort of knowing how the, so how the song was going to work in the show and what it was doing. And I won't say a lot more than that because it, it, it's, it'll spoil it for the show. But, but I sort of wrote this, wrote this, I wrote the, there was a lyric first and I wrote the lyric for it and, and knew, knew it would sort of be in waltz time. And, and uh, I, said, I, remember, I remember I emailed it to Tom. I emailed it to you, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, I emailed it to you and literally you called me back a few hours later, yeah. and you were like, you know, is this what you were thinking? And this is what he played me over the phone. So just play the, it's very much like the opening we have now. I saw you light the ballroom With your sparkling eyes of blue necessarily to write a full-blown musical from that 10-minute um, piece, but uh, the next year in the workshop when you're supposed to be working on a show, Brian and I just, as we were searching for other subject matters, we kept saying, well, let's write another song for Feeling Electric. And uh, it was kind of a backwards way to do things because you should get your story straight first. There are so many cut songs from the show that exist because we kept having to slice things away as the story was getting more uh, in tune with what we wanted. So, um, but it, it's just, a, a, it was a piece and a subject matter we couldn't go away from and we kept writing and writing and finally we had all these songs and, and um, that led to our first <laughs> workshop. I guess we should do a show. I guess we should do a show, exactly. Get 30 songs. <laughs> well, we had this really great idea for a musical about James Dean and Kurt Cobain 
and somehow it was all going to weave together. We would get we would get together and work on this musical, and we'd be like, and then what's going to happen? And then we'd sit there for like ten minutes. We'd be like, let's write a song for Feeling Electric. Mm -hmm. Let's do that instead. Yeah. So it was in a way it sort of told us that that was the show to write, not the James Dean and Kurt Cobain <laughs> musical. <laughs> now I know I have to help her but hell if I know how and all the times that I've been told the way her illness goes the truth of it is no one really knows I've been which is um, a song that's um, that came in for the arena stage production was not in the second stage production um, and will be also in the Broadway production actually is a, is a much older song um, that had been in the show before um, sung by Dan and it actually before that was a Tom Kitt band song and this is something that's happened a couple times for the show I, I would hear a, a, a Tom Kitt band song which you know tend to be songs about a man feeling alone or betrayed <laughs> or needing love or oddly things like that uh, and so in that way they sort of they sort of tend to fit in in a general general way with with the show and I've been is an, just an incredible I think it's an incredible sort of rock song and and just the mood of it and sort of what it was essentially saying made so much sense that I said to Tom you know can we can we use this for the show and maybe rewrite some of the lyrics and he was just you know totally agreeable so so we took the song and you know kind of over the years it's been a long process of making it fit exactly but I, I think it's really exciting how it uh, it's funny that it still exists for the same moment in the show you know we took it out we put it back we tried it in different places and now finally for this version and it feels to fit so perfectly, so it's. it's and, I, nice and I have to say, part there. of that also is, you know, we we, came, we brought it back to, you know, because one of the things after second stage was people were saying, you know, we don't get to know the husband really well in the first act. It's sort of, you know. And, he didn't um, have a moment to himself. You know, he spends a lot of the show reacting and 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 you know in very we didn't exciting get scenes. With, him. We didn't get yeah. to know why he does what he does. So we said to Michael Greif, "Well, we have this song, and we played it for him." And Michael said, "Well, let's try it." And I, you know, without giving anything away, Michael's staging is is like incredible. It's mm -hmm. it, the first time I saw it, even in rehearsal, I I, I got all weepy, um, which happens, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's just the staging of it. It all finally came together, which was really exciting. And every day this act we act gets more and more absurd And all my fears just sit inside me screaming to be heard I know they won't though not a single word I was here at her side when she called when she cried How could she leave me on my own? psychotropic medications and people who are on um, medications for, for, for their uh, psychiatric conditions. And we had a number of friends who had that experience and, and, and also people in our families. And in talking to them, one of the things that we had spoken to them about is this experience of, of even when the medicine balances you out, which is hugely important, this feeling of feeling flat or feeling like you're not yourself somehow. Uh, and we wanted to express that in a song. We were, we'd been talking about that and thinking about that. And I actually had a layover in the Denver airport one, one day and was looking at a beautiful sort of airport with huge windows. And I was like staring out the windows at the Rockies and this phrase, I miss the mountains, came to mind. And it sort of seemed to make real sense as a kind of metaphor for missing those highs and lows of life and all the good things and all the bad things that come with it. And so that really kind of, I actually kind of wrote most of that lyric on the plane cool. to LaGuardia and then sent it to Tom and what he turned it into was, was just, uh, I just love it. All the manic magic days and the dark depressing nights.
show's mostly songs, and a lot of times we'll come up with a song. And if it's something like this, where it has a very specific sort of intellectual idea or a very specific action that has to be put across, often we'll do the lyrics first because otherwise it will take me like six months to write. To write. Um, but but a lot of times we'll also come up with a, with a moment where like we, it's an energy or an emotion or a feeling that's most important. Uh, and one of my favorite sort of moments like that was "I'm Alive." We, we wanted to write a song for the song called "I'm Alive," and we felt the most important thing was that it just be a kick-ass rock song and that it really express sort of his vitality and his power and his sort of reveling in, in who he is and what he can do. And so Tom took that and wrote wrote this tune, which then I wrote words to, which I think is awesome. So play it first, play a little bit of sort of what you would send me on the MP3. Okay, so... And then when I get to the chorus, I go, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. something. <laughs> so, and remember I told you the part about how I sent him like these lyrics I've been working on for days and two hours later or an hour later he calls me back with a song. So the flip side of that is he'll send me like an mp3 or I'll record music and then like three months later I call him back and say I've got a few lines. <laughs> But anyway, so that that this is one. This was one of the like most exciting things to write to, and, and it took a while, and we've, we've done many revisions. But this is what it turned into. Why don't you sing it with words now? I am more than memory. I am what might be. I am mystery. You know me. So show me when I appear. It's not so clear if I'm a sinner. incredible and kind of uh, unbelievable. Brian and I have been working on this now for, I would say, almost 11 years, and certainly when, when not you... Not constantly. Not constantly. Not, on no. and off. Yeah, on and off. We did other things. <laughs> Whenever you start writing something, you uh, the goal is, is, is obviously to bring it as far as you can, to, to, to have it be seen by as many people as possible. And a show like this, we, we've just been very passionate about the subject matter. Um, and uh, to that end, a little skeptical about how far it could go because it deals with such a serious subject matter. So the fact that this is happening is kind of unbelievable to us, I think. I hope some people have the experience at our show that I've had at certain shows over my lifetime where it's like something I haven't seen before and it just kind of knocks me sideways for a little bit. And I sort of stagger out into the night and can't get it out of my head for a few days. You know, I always love going to theater that um, not just entertains but also sparks me to, to have dialogue dialogue afterwards and, and stays with me and we found with the show um, that people have a really strong experience and I think that you know whatever happens in terms of you know we're, we're on Broadway now so obviously there are a lot of other things that come into play but just the fact as Brian and I have talked about you know the show has existed for a while the fact that we're here um, I want the experience of the show to be real and to last as long as possible and that would be that would be great.